Hello, Buckeyes. Welcome to this week's episode of the Sports Perspective on Buckeye TV. My name is Victoria Leahy. And I'm Franz Ross. So, Victoria, what do you think of the Buckeyes' return to Big Ten play? I thought it was a really awesome game, and I'm happy that Braxton Miller has finally returned. The Buckeyes finally opened Big Ten play last weekend, defeating conference rival Wisconsin 31-24 under the lights in Ohio Stadium with the OSU win. Ohio State continues to extend its winning streak to 17 straight games, the longest in the nation. Sports director Brad Comer was at the horseshoe with the recap from Saturday night's game. Well, this was Ohio State's first true test as they started Big Ten play and finished their non-conference portion of the season. And two big headlines came into this primetime matchup. The first one, Wisconsin, a top 25 team. How will the Buckeyes be tested in this game? And second, there's a quarterback controversy coming into the Wisconsin game. How would Braxton Miller and Kenny Guyton split time in this big top 25 matchup? Urban Meyer mentioned if Braxton Miller was healthy, he would earn the start, and boy did he impress. In his first start since San Diego State, Miller burned Wisconsin for 198 yards in the air and four touchdowns, and rushed for 83 in the 31-24 win over the Badgers. Braxton's four TD passes matched his career high, and his 83 rushing yards marked him as the all-time rushing leader for a quarterback in Ohio State history. Despite the Buckeye win, the Bucks also suffered a loss. Senior free safety and captain Christian Bryant will miss the remainder of the season with a broken ankle. That darn kid has done so much for our program. He's come so far, incredible leadership skills, and he's going to be even more valuable outside of football. Man, I love that guy. Doggone it. Mm. It's a hard part of the game, boy. Guys, really probably the heart and soul of who we are. And, you know, we say that sometimes about a bunch of different guys, but he's a guy that's uh, come a long way for us. And I just I don't mean that on the field, but I mean just in his leadership abilities and different things like that. But that's a huge loss because he's like the leader. He's the one of the leaders of our defense. And uh, but we we just gonna have to keep keep going and and just keep keep playing the rest of the season for him. It, it it's uh it's probably one of the. The worst things that can happen right now, I mean, because he's like a big brother to everybody on the defense and the team. He's just uh, he just bring that that leadership role that that he kind of just calm everybody down when things going bad. We're not worried about you know the plan. We're worried about the leadership aspect. Uh, it's going to take uh, all the leaders to you know do more. You know, myself to do more, and you know, cause I, we got to replace his leadership. That's concern number one. Concern number probably one, two, and three is who's going to fill his spot, who's going to assume the uh, leadership uh, obligation and responsibility that he has, that he has uh, shown. Uh, incredible young man. Now with Christian Bryant out for the remainder of the season, there's really no word he's going to step up and take over his place. Pitt Brown has been mentioned. He's been playing the nickel at the moment. He could slide over to the free safety position and take over for the senior captain of this team. Ohio State's next opponent is going to be Northwestern in Evanston. That's another top 25 opponent, two top 25 opponents in a row for Ohio State. Many analysts have been considering this game as a trap game. It might be upset alert for the Buckeyes in Chicago. From Ohio Stadium, I'm Brad Comer, Buckeye TV Sports. Taking a look at the AP and coaches polls, Ohio State remains the same this week, a number four in the AP and three in the coaches. Notable Big Ten teams ranked this week are Northwestern at 16 and 15, Michigan dropping again in 19th and 17th, and Nebraska sneaks in the rankings, coming in at 25th in the coaches poll. In Braxton Miller's return last weekend, the junior quarterback was awarded the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week in his efforts versus the Wisconsin Badgers. According to Miller, it felt great to finally see the field again after suffering a knee injury back in Week 2 against San Diego State. I've been working really hard these last couple weeks because I've been hurt in uh, my fundamental wise. And, you know, the Coach Herman and Coach Meyer, they always talk about fundamentals, and that's what I've been working on. And that's how I get my things going, and I can't get all the glory to myself. i got to give it to the team. But, uh, when Braxton, uh, when I saw on Thursday what I saw, then there was no doubt who's going to be our starter. And, and we've got to keep moving forward and keep everybody uh, locked in on the target. And that's going to be a tough target again next week. When the Buckeyes play at home in prime time, you're always expecting a capacity crowd. The 105,826 that watched OSU in Wisconsin was the third largest attended game in Ohio State history. Assistant News Director Alice Bacani was in the Horseshoe last Saturday night hanging out with Buckeye Nation. The first Big Ten Conference game and the first night game of the season brought the third largest crowd in OSU history and fans dressed for the occasion. 
This fan spent about 200 bucks to look like the famous Sesame Street character, but others chose to spend more time rather than money. We usually get here four hours before the game to paint up and everything. Then after that, we run around the stadium. And I like to like change it up every game for this game. I wear like a light up necklace for this game. I like to change it up. He calls himself the OSU Buckeye Man, and he makes sure that his costume represents much more than just looks, like his seven Buckeye necklaces that represent different facts of OSU football history. And also, 109 Buckeyes. That's how many times they played Michigan. And they weigh seven pounds. What a coincidence. That's the exact number of Heisman Trophy winners we had. This is all for the love of the game. You try to come out and get people around you energized. That's my role as Buckeye Man. But students agree that the afternoon games can't compare with the atmosphere of night games. Night games are 10 times better. Everyone just doesn't know what to do after night games and they're all just in the streets. And it's just everyone congregates together and all the Buckeye fans just group into one section and just go crazy. I'd say the night games are better. Gives everyone more of a chance. Let's the uh, anticipation build up a little more. I know 12 o'clock's not early for most people, but I guess all the college kids, it's a little bit early. Reporting for Buckeye TV, I'm Alice Bacani. Coming up next, are the Buckeyes on upset alert this Saturday in Evanston? We'll see what players and coaches had to say about Northwestern after the break. For a second straight week, Ohio State not only plays in primetime, but will also face off against another top 25 opponent in Northwestern. 15th ranked Wildcats may be 4 0 on the season, and with the game being played in Evanston, some analysts don't believe a Northwestern victory helps make up for a week schedule. They, they say we got a week schedule or whatever, so they say that we're not ready for the big game or whatever, but I mean, we're just going to keep doing the same thing that we've been doing and we're going to keep winning, so I mean, they only going to hold us down for so long. Another night game, uh, game day I hear is, uh, is going to be there. And it'll be, a, it'll be a heck of an atmosphere, so we look forward to this challenge. Taking a look at some final scores around Ohio State Athletics, the women's soccer team falls to Purdue at home 1-0, while the, ten, the men's team falls short at Indiana 2-0 in their Big Ten opener. The field hockey team fell short to Michigan State 3-2, and the women's ice hockey team lost their exhibition to the University of Toronto 2 goals to 1. Actually, Franz, the men's ice hockey team is having their first preseason game against Toronto this weekend at home. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, the Buckeyes have a new head coach in Steve Rollick, so a win against the University of Toronto would really start things off for the Buckeyes. Most definitely. Well, that's all we have for you today at the Sports Perspective. I'm Franz Ross. And I'm Victoria Lee. Hope to see you Buckeyes next week.